Hello crafty friends, welcome to another clean and simple card making video. Today I sat down with the intention of playing again. I just wanted to grab some things that made me happy and see where they took me. So I rummaged through my white paper scraps and pulled out this bit of hammered white cardstock. It's got a hammered texture to it. I stuck it onto my grip mat to hold it still dusted it with some corn flour and then used Versamark watermark ink to stamp using a new to me stamp. This is a marble texture stamp. So what I wanted was to heat emboss a marble texture onto my card. This is quite a large stamp and I thought rather than trying to get it in a stamp positioner, I would simply carefully lay it down onto my card and then press it down with my fingers. Because it's a pattern and not a particularly repeating pattern, I think you can get away with not getting perfect impressions. Also, because this cardstock has a hammered texture to it, I knew I wasn't going to get necessarily solid impressions either because of the lumpy bumpiness of the paper. Anyway, I dipped my inked card into some gold embossing powder and then heated it with my heat tool. And once that had cooled and set, I decided to smush on some color. I ummed and ahed about what colors to use, but I thought I'd go for something that was really gonna make the gold pop. So I picked Seedless Preserves Distress Oxide, smushed it onto my glass mat, added some water to make a paint, and then picked it up with my smusher and smushed it on. Once that was dry, I did exactly the same thing, but this time with broken china. I thought the blue would go well with that kind of magenta color and they would layer up nicely. Next, I brought in a microfiber cloth and used it to buff up the gold embossing just to get any ink that was sitting on top of the gold off so it would really shine. After that, I decided to die cut some heart-shaped frames out of my DIY pattern paper for no other reason than it's what popped into my mind and I thought I would enjoy it. So I got some nesting heart dies and a sticky note and, and nested the dies one inside the other, making sure to get a nice equal gap all the way around in between each die and then I ran that through my die cutting machine with some of the card that I just created. I also did exactly the same thing with a piece of white cardstock because as I was cutting them out, I thought it would be really nice if I could interweave some white hearts with the colourful hearts. I hope you can see what I mean. As I was doing that, I thought, oh, what if I pop the colourful heart frames up and have the white heart frames flat? And I thought, yes, why don't we do that? But we can add some craft foam to the back before we die cut and that will make the process so much easier. So I did that with another set. And these are all the hearts and heart shaped frames that I ended up with. Off camera, I die cut lots of stitched rectangle panels so that I had something to add my hearts and heart frames to. For this first one, I took a large colorful heart, stuck it in the top half of my card panel and then added the second size down. So I've got two frames on that one. Next, I took a panel and scored three lines vertically on the left hand side. I flipped it over so those lines were raised rather than depressed as it were. And then I added one of the heart frames, centering it over the three lines that I scored and I added a solid heart inside that. Next, I took another panel and scored five lines horizontally flipped it over again and then I glued down one of the white frames that I'd cut and added foam to the back of one of the colourful frames which I then stuck inside the white frame. I then glued down another white frame and then added some foam to the back of the smallest solid heart and popped that in the middle. So it goes flat white frame raised colourful frame, flat white flame, raised colourful heart. 
At the end of the video, I'm going to pop in some close up pictures for you so you should be able to see all the texture and dimension as well as the shimmer and shine. I do apologize for the beeping in the background. It's a very hot day here and it seems to have woken up our pet frogs and they are now beeping at each other quite loudly. So for my next card, I scored five horizontal lines. This time I used it with the dips facing up rather than the raised score lines. And for this one, I stuck the colorful pieces flat on the card and raised up the white pieces on craft foam. So it's kind of a reverse of the previous card. Next, I wanted to find some different ways of adding texture to my cards and hearts. So I die cut a couple of big white hearts out and then I ran them through my cuttle bug with a heart embossing folder to emboss some heart texture. And in both of these, I added my colorful hearts and frames before sticking them to their card panels. And I really like the added bit of texture that those hearts give to the focal points of these cards. I had some more solid hearts that I cut out of some remnants of that uh, colourful piece that I created and I wanted to put two on a card and I thought we'll pop them over a square frame. So I cut a square frame out of smooth white card and stuck it down in the top half of my card panel. And when I cut these frames, they also cut the squares in the middle. So I did the same thing that I did with the hearts just now. I ran it through my cuttle bug with the heart embossing folder. So now I've got a nice stitched textural square frame with a heart textured piece of white card in the middle. And then I took the release paper off of the hearts and stuck them on, overlapping the edges of the frame. For my next card panel, I scored three lines vertically. I spaced them slightly wider than I'd done on the previous cards. And at this point, I just had one solid heart left. So I thought I would add it over the center of those three lines. Off camera again, I used some punches and some teeny tiny heart dies to cut out loads of little hearts from the bits that were left over. And then I used a border die to emboss some texture on one of my card panels. I just used the embossing sandwich with my cuttle bug. And then I took some of the tiny hearts that I'd cut out and arranged them in a horizontal line over that embossed border texture to the left hand side of the card panel. Some of these little hearts have foam on the back and some of them I glued down flat. And I did try to alternate the dimensional ones and the flat ones so they weren't all bunched up together. I think it goes foam, flat, foam, flat, foam, flat, I think on this one. On my last card, I used a wavy scalloped edge border die to emboss some texture. And again, just added all the rest of the hearts that I had, some with foam, some without foam, and added them so they followed that curvy line. Some were floating above it, some below it, but they all followed the line somehow. I did end up with a couple of little hearts left over that I couldn't quite squeeze onto this card. So I decided to add them onto this card, which has two larger solid hearts already. To keep things super simple, I chose a typewriter font, all my heart stamp and stamped it on all the cards. I didn't want to use black, so I used seedless preserves. It's a nice strong color and obviously it's already present on the colorful hearts. I stamped it in a variety of ways or places rather. 
which you can see in these close-up photographs. Right, that's it for today. I had a really lovely time making these cards, making them up as I went along, adding bits, taking away bits, rethinking how I was going to stick things on. I do hope you've enjoyed today's video and it's given you some ideas of things you can do with the supplies that you already have. If it has, please do leave a thumbs up let me know in the comments, subscribe, ring the notification bell and I'll see you back here tomorrow for another video. Thanks for watching, bye for now.